Good Monday morning, everybody. It is currently April 1st. I'm about to head into work, but I wanted to officially open the vlog. So I mentioned in the final clip of the last vlog that I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. I'm going to see about transitioning to weekly vlogs because even though it's actually more content, I think it might be easier overall to edit and compile all of the footage that goes into a vlog. So we're going to see. I honestly don't know how it's going to turn out just because I'm going to have to figure out when to edit all of the footage regardless of whether it's one week or two weeks worth. But I wanted to see how it goes. So today starts the first of the hopefully weekly vlogs and I just wanted to give you a reading update. So I believe in my last update I was still in the middle of The Banker's Wife by Christina Alger and I really enjoyed that one. That to me was a solid suspense thriller and I highly recommend if you are looking for something that is not only fast paced and compelling but is also pretty clever. It deals with overseas banking which I don't think I've ever read a thriller that actually covers that but there's a lot of corruption in overseas banking with a lot of people trying to evade taxes and money launder through overseas banking and that's really what this was about you're following two people, two women, one in the United States, a journalist in New York, and then you're also following a woman whose husband was a personal banker at Swiss United, a very big bank that was handling a lot of overseas money. Her husband dies in a plane crash and she doesn't think that it was an accident. She thinks that he was targeted and she kind of finds herself a target as well. And it's about these two women trying to uncover all of the secrets of this bank and all of the money that's going into it and all the corruption and things like that. And so as I mentioned, I thought it was very solid, very compelling, very fast paced. I had never read a Christina Alger before. I have another one of our books on my physical TBR and now I'm even more excited to get to that one. And then immediately after finishing that I picked up The Huntress by Kate Quinn because that actually came in from my library and it was a gift in March for my birthday from Laura Reeds and so I was excited to go ahead and pick this up and from what I can tell it follows three different perspectives over three different timelines. You're following a girl named Jordan. It is 1946. The war has just ended and her father who was widowed a couple of years ago has brought home a woman who he intends to marry. And even though Jordan wants her father to be happy she's really suspicious of this woman because she's very private, very secret and Jordan is kind of determined to uncover what this woman is hiding. You're also following a man named Ian in 1950, so five years after the war's end, and he spends his time hunting war criminals, and there is one war criminal who he is desperate to get, the Huntress. We're not really that far into this perspective, so we don't know all of the details of her crimes or anything like that, but apparently she was part of the war effort and she essentially killed people. And then you're also following Nina. Now Nina is currently in Ian's timeline as well because she is actually going to help Ian find the Huntress, but you're following her in the early days before the war and then during the war as she actually is almost a victim of the Huntress. And the reason why she is helping Ian is because she wants justice for almost dying at the hands of the Huntress, if that makes sense. So we're following multiple timelines and I'm really interested to see how they all come together. I have a feeling that I know who the woman is that Jordan is suspicious of, but I guess we're going to find out and I'm here for it. I have really enjoyed Kate Quinn in the past and I know that she can weave together a wonderful historical fiction. All right, everybody, it is time to go ahead and start my day, but I will check in with you when I have more updates on the Huntress or when I have finished it. to head into work but I wanted to pop on really quick just to say that I really don't have very many reading updates for you because I'm still working my way through The Huntress by Kate Quinn. This is actually a very long historical fiction y'all. It is a 20 hour long audiobook. I've been listening now for about two and a half days and I only just passed the 50% mark this morning so I definitely have at least two days of listening time left and I'm gonna be honest and say that I'm definitely feeling its length at this point. I think The Rose Code was about the same length as this if not longer or just a tad shorter but it never felt that long to me. I felt like it flowed so beautifully and that was like almost perfect perfection in my eyes, but this one is definitely ebbing and flowing. There are certain timelines that I'm not very interested in, so it's not necessarily holding my attention. I'm not as engaged as I was expecting to be, which is a shame because I went into this thinking that it was going to be like my new favorite Kate Quinn, and it's actually kind of turning out to be my least favorite. Even my least favorite Kate Quinn is still a solid historical fiction. It would still likely be a strong four stars. It's definitely not as compelling as I was thinking it was going to be. However, I will say that two of the timelines are now finally intersecting. We have Ian. He is that journalist who has spent the years after the war hunting Nazis and bringing 
them to justice. He is the one that desperately wants to find the Huntress because the Huntress is responsible for war crimes, including killing his brother. And then the perspective of Jordan. She was the one who in 1946, her father brought home this mysterious woman that Jordan was very suspicious of. And now it is 1915. Ian and his partner and Nina. Nina is the third perspective that we're getting. She also had a confrontation with the Huntress and survived. She's like the Huntress's only surviving victim there in America. They've met up with Jordan under disguise. And I feel like now it's going to like all come together. I feel like now it's going to start quickening up in pace. We're going to start uncovering things. I'm a little disappointed that we really don't know all that much about the Huntress at this point. Like we do know that she's responsible for the death of Ian's brother. We do know that she attacked Nina. We do know that she's responsible for some deaths, but we haven't really gone in depth about what her crimes are. And I feel like this book hurts because of that. I feel like we should have gotten her perspective or we should at least know a little bit about her because I'm still not entirely sure why these people are so gung-ho on getting her aside from their personal attachment to what she did. I feel like I would have liked her perspective rather than Nina in the past because we've got Nina in the future in 1950 with Ian and we already know that she survived that she made it out and I feel like she could have relayed her experiences to Ian without us having to go through all of the backstory of her becoming a pilot. I really don't feel like that's adding too terribly much to the story overall and I find myself zoning out every single time it switches back to that. I'm far more interested in Jordan's timeline as well as Ian's timeline which like I said are now intersecting and I really want to follow that and see what they uncover. I'm going to hold out hope that Kate Quinn can bring this home and that the last 50% is going to be a little bit more fast paced and engaging than the first half. But anyway y'all I'm going to go ahead and head into work and I probably won't touch base with you again until I finished The Huntress so I will see you when I see you. friends. It is finally Friday. I could not be more thrilled that tomorrow is a weekend. I have been going through it this week. So I went and I grabbed some emotional support donuts. We are about to get this day started. But first I wanted to give you an update because I finally, finally, finally finished The Huntress by Kate Quinn. This book took me four and a half days to listen to y'all. And I'm so glad that it's finally done. I will say that I started enjoying it a lot more in the second half. It definitely picked up overall and I found myself a little bit more invested in what was happening. Oh, I'm sorry if you can hear the train. We're right by some railroad tracks. Hopefully it is not too terribly distracting. But anyway, I do honestly believe that this book was entirely too long. I do not believe it needed to be a 20 hour long audiobook. I believe that at least three or four hours of this could have been cut and it would have flowed a lot better. It would have been better paced. It would have been a little bit more compelling. It would have kept me interested the entirety of the time. But as it was, it definitely felt its length in my opinion. And I'm still of the mind that we did not need Nina's past perspective. Ultimately, I feel like all it was meant to do was to show us what ended up happening when she met Ian's brother Seb and they ultimately encountered the Huntress. And I don't feel like Nina's perspective needed to be in there for that to happen. I feel like this book would have been much better served had we got the perspective of the Huntress because we never find out anything really about who she was, what she went through, why she did what she did. We learned nothing about her experiences and it felt ultimately just very unsatisfying. I really have no idea why there was this entire 20 hour long audiobook about hunting the Huntress when you don't even really get to know about the Huntress. So I'm very sad to say that I think that this is my least favorite Kate Quinn to date. Ultimately, I'm still going to give it a four stars because it's very well written and I do love a very character driven story, but there was still a lot of technical issues that I had with this one. Honestly, I think it's leaning a little bit more towards a three point five, which my mind is blown by. I absolutely would never think that I could possibly give a Kate Quinn lower than a four stars, but this one just was not as compelling to me as her other works. And like I said, I really do feel like there was a missed opportunity here to get the perspective of the Huntress. Ultimately, this did not work for me like I thought that it would, but that's okay. Like I said, it was still very well written and I will still absolutely be picking up anything from Kate Quinn in the future. This just was not exactly what I expected it to be. And immediately after finishing that one, I picked up The Housemaid Secret, which is the next book in the Housemaid series by Frieda McFadden. I really enjoy Frieda McFadden's thrillers. I think that she writes a very fast paced, engaging, almost kind of a popcorn read. And we are still following the main character, Millie, who was of course the housemate in the first book. And we're following her as she's at a new job. Obviously there's something weird going on at this new place where she's cooking and cleaning. And I'm excited to find out what it is. I've literally only been listening to it for maybe the past like 40 minutes. So I really don't have much thoughts or opinions on it at this point, but I will be sure to come on here and update you when I have more. Anyway, y'all, it is time for me to go nom on some donuts, but I will check in with you later.
is currently Saturday morning and I am not sprinting or filming today, so it's going to be a no makeup day for me. My husband and I are actually just about to head out to Ocean Springs, which is a small coastal town here in Southern Mississippi. It's not too terribly far away. It's maybe about 40 minutes, if that, but we never really go because we don't have a cause to, but it's got this cute little downtown area. So we thought we would trip around, go to the shops, have some lunch just to get out of the house. But I did want to take some time and give you an update just because I did get some books in the mail that I wanted to share with you. Perhaps one that I'm most excited about is Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This book has been everywhere on the internet and I've really been feeling the FOMO and I'm in need of my next immersion read since finishing the bone season. And I have a lot of fantasy audio on hold at my library that I'm just waiting to come in because I like to read these immersively. And so since I was in between books and my next library hold is not expected in for a few weeks, I went ahead and grabbed this because the audiobook for this is actually an Audible exclusive and I would have had to buy a credit for this anyway. I honestly don't really know anything about this. All I know is that it's a lot of people's favorite fantasy romance and vampires and honestly say less, right? So it says, the adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king, Oriya, parked her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the Kijari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. But winning won't be easy against the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Oriya is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival. Everything about Rain is dangerous. He is a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy to her father's crown, and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Oriya most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. But there's no room for compassion in the Kijari. War for the nightborn crown brews, shattering everything that Oriya thought she knew about her home. And Rain may understand her more than anyone, but their blossoming attraction could be her downfall in a kingdom where nothing is more deadly than love. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, I've heard almost literally nothing but great things about this series and her other series as well. So I'm really excited to be getting into this. I don't know if I'm going to start it this weekend, but this is definitely going to be my next immersion read. So excited about that. And I also got my April book of the month selections. So I thought I would show those to you really quickly. First, I have Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. Yes, I know that I've said multiple times that I've broken up with Megan Miranda and that is still the case, but I'm reading this book for a very, very specific reason, a reason that y'all are not going to find out about until the very end of the year. But I went ahead and picked this up because I needed it for that very specific reason. I know that it's about a woman whose mother went missing several years before and a lake is drained and I think they found the car of her missing mother. So there's like a reluctant return home thing going on here and stuff like that. And I'm gonna give it a shot. I don't know what it is about Megan Miranda, but her books are always supremely mediocre to me, but yet I'm always drawn by the synopsis of her books. Like I said, I don't really think that I'm going to read her going forward. The only reason why I'm reading this is for a very specific content related purpose, but we're gonna give it a try and who knows, maybe it'll end up being my favorite Miranda yet. I'm not holding out that hope, but we'll see. I also got Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth. Now I got this primarily for the same reason that I got Daughter of Mine, but not as reluctantly. I read The Soulmates by Sally Hepworth, which was a book of the month selection, I believe last year, and I didn't hate it at all. That was my very first experience with Sally Hepworth and I'm totally willing to give her another try. I just don't know if I would have been as eager to pick this up if it had not been for that reason. I know literally nothing about this. It says, for as long as they can remember, Jessica, Nora, and Alicia have been told how lucky they are. As young girls, they were rescued from family tragedies and raised by a loving foster mother, Miss Fairchild, on an idyllic farming estate and given an elusive second chance at a happy family life. But their childhood wasn't the fairy tale everyone thinks it was. Miss Fairchild had rules. Miss Fairchild could be unpredictable. And Miss Fairchild was never ever to be crossed. In a moment of desperation, the three broke away from Miss Fairchild and thought they were free. Even though they never saw her again, she was always somewhere in the shadows of their minds. When a body is discovered under the home they grew up in, the foster sisters find themselves thrust into the spotlight as key witnesses. Or are they prime suspects? I don't really need to know more than that. I'm completely down for giving Sally Hepworth another try and I'm excited for this one. And then of course, no surprise to anybody, I absolutely had to pick up Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This is her brand new release and it's honestly the next book that I'm going to read because surprisingly enough, the audiobook for this just came in from my library. So as soon as I finish The Housemaid's Secret, I'm going to dive right into this one. I really don't need to know what this is about. It is Abby Jimenez and she's my favorite romance author of all time. I know that she's going to have very compelling, lovable main characters. I know that there's going to be some harder hitting elements, some conflict in there. I am super excited about this one. And like I said, this is going to be my next read. And then as I mentioned in the previous clip and just now, I am in the middle of The Housemaid's Secret. I only have two hours of listening time on audio. I am literally about to head out the door, so I really don't have time to give you my thoughts and feelings on it right now. But of course, I am loving it just like any other Frieda McFadden. It is super compulsively readable and I'm enjoying my experience. I don't think I'm going to be giving you more of an update until I've actually finished it. Tomorrow, I'll be able to tell you what overall it's about and my thoughts and feelings. So I will check in with you then.
everyone so it is currently Sunday morning I just got done filming a video and I thought it would be the perfect time to come on here and actually wrap up this vlog because I have also just finished The Housemaid's Secret by Frida McFadden and I wanted to actually tell you what this one was about and give you an update so if you're not familiar this is the second book in the Housemaid series by Frida McFadden in the very first book we we're introduced to Millie and Millie has actually just been released from prison after 10 years and she's having a very hard time finding a job she's basically living in her car she's down on her luck and she goes to interview as kind of like the maid for this very wealthy family in New York and she thinks no way are they ever going to hire me with my background but she gets hired and of course if things seem too good to be true they probably are and it doesn't take long for Millie to notice that something is very interesting about this family first the mom Nina is very very unstable she's telling Millie to do things and then she forgets that she told Millie to do things so when Millie goes and does those things she gets mad at Millie for doing them or vice versa she says that she told Millie to do something when she never did and so when Millie doesn't do what she was never told to do Millie gets in trouble but Millie is going to stick with it she's going to work it out because this is literally the best job that she's ever had but not only that but it's a live-in position and then you're also following Millie as she's kind of developing a relationship with Nina's husband and it goes from there I don't really want to say more but needless to say this gets very twisty very turny and you're finding out some really interesting surprises by the end and I really really enjoyed how the story ended because it kind of set Millie up for some more adventures and this is definitely one of those adventures so this book takes place I want to say about four years after the first one and once again Millie is kind of down on her luck she's recently just been fired from a nanny slash maid job that she had and once again she gets a job with a very wealthy couple and almost instantaneously she thinks that something is off something is wrong with this couple because the husband who is this very rich very wealthy CEO of a popular company says that his wife is ill and not to bother her so his wife lives in the guest room she doesn't come out and Millie is very concerned doesn't know what is going on and pretty soon she starts to find out that the man is abusive to his wife and she's going to take action. She's going to try to help the wife Wendy. And it goes from there because things are not as they seem. As per usual, Rita McFadden provides a wild twisty turny ride. Every single one of her books goes in a really completely unique direction and there's always some kind of little twist that she throws in at the end that is just kind of like the cherry on the top of the cake. You know what I mean? I always have a fantastic time with Rita McFadden's books and this is no different. I'm so pleased that I finally got to this and I know that there is at least one more book coming out in this series that I'm hyped to get to. So this was a wonderful time. And I haven't actually started it yet yet but my next read is going to be Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez because the hold for the library book just came in from my library which I was not expecting. This book literally just came out like a week ago and the fact that it's in from my library is absolutely astonishing but you all know how I feel about Abby Jimenez. She is my favorite romance author of all time at this point. I really don't know much about it to be honest. It says when it comes to love Emma is cursed. Every guy she dates finds his true love after they break up but it turns out she's not the only one afflicted with this condition. His name is Justin and his reddit thread about being love's good luck charm has gone viral. Now the two have come up with an ingenious plan. If they date each other their curses will cancel out and they'll go on to find their soulmate only Justin wasn't supposed to be so unbelievably cute and hilarious when Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardianship of his three siblings they're suddenly navigating a lot more than they expected including catching real feelings has fate finally brought the perfect pair together or will their cure be more hazardous than the curse itself I don't need to know more I'm here for it this is Abby Jimenez and I'm very very excited to get to it all right everybody well that is it for this vlog as I mentioned either at the beginning of this vlog or the end of last vlog I'm trying something a little bit different with vlogging I'm trying to move potentially to a more weekly vlogging style I think that it's just going to be a little bit easier keeping up with all of that footage and so we're going to see how it goes they're probably not going to be up exactly every single week but as close to it as I can possibly get with all of the editing that is involved so I'm going to go ahead and end this so I can get all of this footage edited and uploaded in a decent amount of time and I will check in with you tomorrow when I start the next one bye guys